he is like that. I'm not his name. He is like that. Yeah, just that my bay. So, as we finished yesterday, I went over some small portions about the symmetry with circles. Okay, so now I'm going to cover the last of our properties, at least the ones that we talked about in this chapter. Um, so, the first property we have here is the perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through its center. Now all of those words right now, for most of you, probably make no sense. So um, the picture, I know it's not quite visible on the page, but it's pretty close. This, first of all, a chord, like I said yesterday, is just any line that passes from one side of your circle to another. Okay, so that's a chord. The perpendicular bisector, what that means is bisector means to cut something in half, to bisect it, right? So to cut it exactly in half. And perpendicular means that it goes through that chord at a 90 degree angle. So it goes through that at a 90 degree angle, okay? So as you can see, this chord here is cut in half, so both of these uh, segments are the same. And then this goes through at a 90 degree angle. So this line here goes through the center of our circle. Okay? So that's your first property. Perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through the center. And it doesn't matter where the chord is. Any chord, no matter where I draw it. So if I put one here, oh, if I put one here, there. It doesn't matter where I put the chord. If I have a perpendicular bisector to that chord, it will always go through the center of the circle. Right. The next one. Equal chords are equidistant from the center. And chords equidistant from the center are equal in length. So, those are big words for basically what I showed you yesterday. Again, up here it's not so visible, but on your page you can see it a little more clearly. So all it means is that if I have two chords and they are the same distance from the center of the circle, they are the same length. Okay, so two chords, the same distance from the center of the circle are the same length. Okay, so that's what the second one means. The third one, uh, two tangents drawn to a circle from the same point outside the circle are equal in length. I think I have one there. Oh, there it is. So tangents, we've talked about those before, right? So when we dealt with um, finding the slope of a curve at a certain point, we draw a tangent at that point. So a tangent is something that just touches the edge of our shape at one point, okay? So this tangent here just barely touches at A, and this one touches just barely at B, but it only touches those one points, okay? And <clears throat> if they're drawn outside of the circle and they meet at some point here, they will be equal in length, okay? So they will have the same length. So these three properties we're going to use to solve some questions about circles. So, um, if you want to see the proofs of each property, they can be found in the textbook. Um, so you can look in the chapter there, and it explains how each one works or why it works. But I'm going to skip that for now. So our first example, we want to calculate the length of chord AB. So here's our circle. Okay? I have chord AB, and I need to find the length of that. So what I know is I know the radius of my circle is 6.5 centimeters, and I know from the center to X is 6 centimeters. And for this particular problem, right here is a right angle, because this here would be the perpendicular bisector of this chord. Because remember, the first property says that the perpendicular bisector goes through the center, 
So that line there goes through the center and bisects the chord AB. So I need to find the length of this chord. So any ideas on what I might use to solve for my length here? Any ideas at all? Yes, Pythagorean theorem, exactly. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? Pythagorean theorem. So because at x we have a right angle here, that means that I can use this property, Pythagorean theorem. So this side here would be c squared, right? Because it's opposite my right angle. And this side here could be a or b, doesn't matter. So I'll choose that one to be b. So I have a squared plus b squared is going to be 6. So 6 squared equals, oops, let's fix that over here. So not much better. Equals 6.5 squared. So I'm just going to solve for a. So this, of course, is something that you've done before. Hopefully you remember doing this. So a squared is equal to 6.5 squared minus 6 squared. So a squared is going to be equal to, and as much as I'd love to be able to do that calculation in my head, I'm not that good. There we go. Gives me 6 point So then finally, a would be the square root of 6.25. So square root of 6.25 is 2.5. Okay? So for what we Calculated here, this side is A. So I calculated the length of this side here to be two and a half centimeters. So if our side A there is two and a half centimeters, what is the length of the chord AB? David? Five. Right? This is the perpendicular bisector, which means both of these sides are the same length. So if this is two and a half, this is also two and a half. So chord AB is five centimeters. Any questions about this one? So our next example, we're going to use mostly our second property for this one. So O is the center of the circle with radius 11 centimeters. AB and CD are chords. AB is 14 centimeters. If OX, so this side here, OX and OY are equal to each other, find the length of Do you have the length already? You have the length already? Yeah, I already know. Well, give everybody else a chance first. <laughs> so, for this example, I need to find OY. So, what do I need in order to find OY? In order to find the length of that side, what do I need to find first? AB? We have A, B. Y, D. Yes, exactly. I need to find this side length of radius. Y, D. So how do I find this side length? A, B is 14 divided by 2 is 7. It's opposite of the side length. So we're going to use our second property today. We know A, B is 14 centimeters. 
So because these two sides are the same, OX and OY, that means I know that CD is also 14 centimeters. Because our second property says if they're the same distance from the center, they are the same length. So I know this is 14 centimeters. So also, because of our first property, I know this is a right angle, so I know that OY bisects CD, cuts it in half. So if CD is 14 centimeters, that means YD is 7 centimeters. So now that I have YD, I can find OY using what? Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I say a squared plus seven squared equals eleven squared. A squared equals eleven squared minus seven squared, and a squared is equal to one twenty-one minus forty-nine, which is seventy-two. So then a is equal to the square root of 72, which is 8.5? I don't know. 8.5? 8.5. 8.5. Okay. So then oy is equal to 8.5 centimeters. Now one thing I do want to point out now, which hopefully is obvious based on the picture that I drew, is your pictures when you're make, solving these problems are not going to be to scale. So we found OY to be eight and a half centimeters, which is more than seven centimeters, yet this line is probably a third the length, right? So our pictures, or the pictures at least that I draw, are not going to be to scale. Okay, so don't rely on the picture to say, you know, oh, that's bigger, it must be wrong because the line's smaller. No. Okay, so don't you know, measure the pictures or anything like that. They will not be to scale. So are there any questions about this example? You two, good? David, awake? Perfect, okay. Last one. So we want to find the length of x and y in this diagram. So y being the line in the center there, x the one on the left side between n and m. Okay, so I want to find the length of those two, x and y. What do I need to start with here? Yep, first one's very easy. x is equal to 25 centimeters. If we use the third property about tangents on the outside of our circle, these two tangents would be the same length. So if this is 25 centimeters, x is also 25 centimeters. Okay, so I have that. So what do I have next? Right angle triangle. Yes, we have a right angle triangle. Does anyone know why this is a right angle triangle? This one is tangent and we have the radius. Exactly. Because this is tangent to this point, which tells you right away that that is going to be a right angle. Any tangent to, well, I guess to a normal, or in this case to our radius of our circle, will always be at 90 degrees, which is another property I will mention later, but something that you should already know. Okay, so this is 90 degrees, so we can use our Pythagorean theorem once again. And you'll notice with this, we are going to use our Pythagorean theorem a lot. Okay. That's our method of choice for solving most of these problems. So we have 12 centimeters squared plus 25 centimeters squared. Sounds like 27. I believe that. So 12 squared is 144 plus 25 squared is something. So we get 769 equals 
equals c squared. So c is equal to the square root of that, which is 27.7. y is equal to 27.7 centimeters. <clears throat> so we're good so far, at least using the first three properties. So obviously when we get to questions in the book, they will use, you know, maybe use two or all three of these properties in one question. So you have to get used to them. You have to know how they work, what you need to find different parts of your problem. So for example, when we went over this one, the first thing we said is, okay, we need yd before we can find oy. So then we found a way to get the length of this. Right? So you need to look at the question, pay attention to those little things, know what you need to find, and then which property to use. So I was going to save this if I had time, and luckily enough, I went through the first ones pretty quickly. So <clears throat> I have two more properties here, okay? So this mostly deals with the angles inside of our circles, because a lot of times we might not have right angled triangles. So we need to either find a way to have a right angled triangle, or use other methods, so sine, cos, tan, sine, law, cosine law, things like that. So with this one, the angle in a semicircle is a right angle. So the question is, which angle am I talking about? Okay. So this property, yes, we're looking at angle P. So what it says is if you have a semicircle, so half a circle, and you draw a triangle inside of it, Whatever, no matter where this point is, be anywhere on the circle, it's going to be a 90 degree angle. Right? So I could have drawn it over here, for example, and I would still have a 90 degree angle there. No matter where I draw it in the semicircle, I will have a 90 degree angle. But you're not just going to take my word for it, we'll actually go through why that is. So these three segments, AO, OB, OP, are all the same length, okay? Because each one of those is the radius of our circle. And the radius of a circle never changes, so these three must be the same. So I use those little lines to denote that they are the same length. So if these are the same length, that means that these two triangles here are isosceles triangles, which means that this angle and this angle are equal, and this angle and that angle are equal. Because property of an isosceles triangle, those two angles will be the same. They will always be the same. So, now I have a big, a bigger triangle, A, B, P, right? Triangle A, B, P. So all the angles inside of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So I have X plus X plus Y plus Y equals 180 degrees. So I have this angle, this angle, then those two angles together. That gives me triangle A, B, P. So those angles equal 180 degrees. So what I have is two x's plus two y's equals 180 degrees. Now if I factor this here, my two x, two y, I get two times x plus y. So this here and here is still the same thing. So then I divide both sides by 2. So, so I end up with x plus y equals So do you also the lower ones? Yeah. Well, yeah, the two like on the opposite ends are negative. But 
that's just a property of a triangle. If one right angle is 90, the other two half of 90. <clears throat> so this shows you that x plus y is equal to 90 degrees. So you notice I used letters instead of actual numbers. So no matter what the measurements of x and y are, the two of them together will always be 90 degrees in this case, right? If you have a semicircle, the angle at P will always be 90 degrees. Are there any questions about that example? So, Daniel, I guess this is kind of getting into what you said with proofs of these things. Basic, but still. Okay, so one more. Oh, clearly, this is not easy to see, so I will try and fix this. There we go. So, the angle between the tangent and radius is 90 degrees. Um, so this is what we used on the second to la or the third example that we covered, right? So basically, there's nothing really to prove here. Just the fact that the tangent to the radius of a circle will always be 90 degrees. So that's just one that you just need to know. Um, there is a proof we can go through to show why it is 90 degrees, but I don't think we really need to for this one, because this one's fairly basic. So do we have any questions about these last two examples? No? Okay. Um, I think I might save the last thing for next time. That opens up another file which has some of these examples. Um, only because there is still one more property I haven't talked about yet that you need to know in order to answer those questions. Um, so I think tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow I'll cover the last property that you need to know, and then we will do this example. Um, I'll show you this one which basically uses all of your properties you need in, well, I have two different problems that it works in. So what we can do is we can open our textbooks to page 404. And from there, you can practice these problems, the angle ones, as well as the first three properties of circles. Yep, or you can work on the worksheets I gave you yesterday. <laughs>